Better Call Saul is back. Will Jimmy McGill finally be undone by his web of lies and manipulation, and if so, will he take Kim down with him? It's been a long two years, but Better Call Saul is back for its sixth and final season, and we're here to break down everything that happens. The first episode of Better Call Saul Season 6 is like a slow-burning wick steadily inching toward dynamite. We don't see a ton of the consequences from the Season 5 finale just yet, but it's clear that explosions are imminent. What with Saul Goodman and Kim Wexler setting up their plan for revenge against Howard Hamlin by planting drugs in his country club locker. There's also the matter of Nacho going on the run from the cartels, as well as Lalo tracking Nacho down while allowing everyone to believe he's dead after the events of the Season 5 finale. Everyone's lives and livelihoods hang in the balance in the two-part premiere's second episode, Carrot and Stick, and an explosive final season is well underway. It's a good thing AMC saw fit to provide us the season's first two hours back-to-back. -back. Revenge has been a common theme throughout Better Call Saul, and Season 6 Episode 1 really goes all in on that idea. Saul and Kim want revenge against Howard while Lalo seeks retribution against those who try to kill him. But the question remains, where will their quest for revenge leave them? Better Call Saul fans are in for a blast from the past in Carrot and Stick. Saul pays a visit to Craig and Betsy Kettleman who have not been seen since the show's first season when they were accused of embezzlement. The plotline ultimately ended with Craig taking the fall and going to jail. Apparently, he's out now, and he and his wife are running a rinky-dink tax prep outfit. Saul uses the Kettleman's and a false promise that they can clear Craig's name by telling them a story detailing how Howard Hamlin was under the influence of drugs when he represented Craig. They go around town spreading the rumor that Howard's on drugs, but without any concrete evidence, no lawyer will take the case. Still, Saul's done his job. The rumor's out there. Saul and Kim return to the Kettleman's by the episode's end, and they're understandably angry. Saul offers them cash to get them to drop the case, but they don't go down quietly. It's at this point that Kim calls an associate who can take the Kettleman's down once again for tax fraud. Okay, enough carrot. Not wanting to go down that route again, they give up. Surprisingly, the episode implies that Kim has broken bad even more than Saul at this point. Saul was more than happy to offer them hush money. But Kim threatens their very livelihoods. Even Saul's taken aback by the move, and he still winds up giving them the cash. If Kim was willing to threaten the Kettleman's, how far might she be willing to go to enact her revenge on Howard? Nacho thinks he's safe when he checks into the motel in the first episode of Season 6. All he has to do is hide and wait, but in a world where everyone is looking for him, his discovery is inevitable. It doesn't take long for the Salamanca cousins and their crew to stumble upon him, and the result is an all-out shootout in the vicinity. At first, it appears that a lot of the crew members don't care if they bring him in dead or alive, but one of the cousins is quick to shoot one of their own accomplices, telling another crew member, Vivo meaning they want him alive. After his perceived slight against the Salamanca family, why would they want him back alive? It all goes back to the Season 6 premiere episode. Hector Salamanca told Lalo that if he was going to adequately avenge his honor by attacking Gus Fring, he needed proof that Gus was actually behind the attack. The only person they have at their disposal who could feasibly turn on Gus would be Nacho. So they need him alive, at least for the time being. Who knows what Nacho's fate beyond that will be? He doesn't appear at all in Breaking Bad, so things don't exactly look promising. After we see Nacho get apprehended by the Salamancas, there's a scene involving a meeting between Gus, Tyrus, and Mike. Gus is now aware that Lalo is still alive, so they need to go on the defensive to make it out alive. As usual, Mike's cool, calm, and collected. He knows the game better than anyone and he explains that Lalo isn't going to come after him unless he has a good reason to. Naturally, if Nacho squeals, that'd be all the evidence Lalo needs to pin the assassination attempt on Gus and go after him. It could start an all-out turf war between the cartels. Gus thinks strategically, so Mike's the only one actually looking out for Nacho's well-being. And when Gus brings up getting Nacho's father, Mike is adamantly against it. He doesn't want to bring innocence into their twisted game, and it almost causes Mike to lose his head. Fortunately, Nacho calls him right there and then. As we know, Nacho's already been captured. It's unclear what conversation will unfold from the call, but one possibility is that it will involve Nacho trying to get Gus to confess to ordering the hit. It's a deadly game of cat and mouse, and things won't stay so quiet for long.
Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies and TV shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.